This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. A real hero is someone who chooses to go far beyond the limits of what's expected to try and save a life. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of daring attempts to help and courageous battles to survive on Rescue 911. We begin in the dead of winter in Denver, Colorado, as a normal morning for the employees of the Rio Grande Credit Union took an unexpected turn. The aerial footage in this story was taped as the events unfolded on February 9th, 1988. At 11.20 a.m., a call for help came into the Denver 911 center. Denver emergency. This is, this is Rio Grande Credit Union. We just got robbed. 4593. Wait, wait. Slow down. Okay. 4593 Pecos. The man is running down 46th Avenue. Wait, wait. He's running which way? He's running south on 46th by an industrial building. He's running south. Or excuse me, he's running east. And her, if they, if they, I can still see him. The credit union? Yes. He, did he run into that building? I don't see him anymore. Did he run around the corner? What's your name, honey? Pardon me? What is your name? My name is Debbie. Debbie, I want you to stay He's on. not in the truck? Wait, Debbie, you have to stay on the line and talk to the I policeman. Know. Okay, I am, but I'm... Stay on the line, honey. He got into that, that laser. The call was transferred to veteran police dispatcher John Kane. Are you okay? I have a speaker that come on the line. Okay. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Hi, this is the Rio Grande Credit Union. We just got robbed. Okay, what's your address there, ma'am? 4593 Coast. Time is of the essence at this point. These individuals that pull these armed robberies are dangerous people. Okay, now just hold on okay. and I'll get this on the air. Okay. Call officers 4593 Coast, the credit union, on a stick up. Hello, ma'am. How many parties held you up? One party. One party. How long? I started to get the information from the victim and simultaneously get it out to the officers. Detectives Gary Baldwin and Rick Rollins were the nearest officers to the scene when the report of the armed robbery first came over the radio. Knowing that the party only had two ways out of the area in which he was traveling, we decided to pull up into the area where the robbery had taken place rather than going straight to the credit union. It looked like he got into a two-color blazer. A two-tone color blazer. Brown with a white vinyl with a white top. Brown. That, brown blazer with a white top. Right. Rick, that's him. That's him. A few moments later, we saw the car coming uh, toward us, and we started to follow it. X-14. X-14. X-14 came on the air and said that they spotted a vehicle. Just turned off a of Calumet eastbound on 38th Avenue. We didn't pull the vehicle over because we were in a totally unmarked car. There was no way we could warn the public if anything went wrong. The car to cover X-ray 14. You don't know what the reaction might be when you stop this party. Uh, he may give up instantly or he may try to shoot it out with you. This 115, I'm right behind him. Okay, 115. In less than a minute, an officer in a squad car caught up with them. Okay, uniform car's on him. Okay, your exact location now. Okay, we're going under the underpass to Interstate 70 westbound, and he is refusing to stop. Okay, reportedly it's an outside steal from Glendale. That's... He's okay, he's going around the corner. Look, look out, Rick. Going around the corner where? 
Okay, he's going westbound, Interstate 70. Uniform car right on his tail. In another part of the city, news helicopter pilot Mike Silva and photographer Jim Stair had just finished shooting aerial shots for a local newscast. We were en route back to the airport when the assignment desk advised us of a uh, police situation occurring in northwest Denver. They wanted us to head that way and take pictures. As we were headed towards the scene, Mike programmed the radio to receive the uh, police department. He's still westbound. Approach. He's getting in the right-hand lane. Watch this man, I'm right on him. You could hear the sirens in the background. You could hear the engine noise on the vehicles as they accelerated, brakes screeching. You could tell that there was a desperate situation occurring. X-14, give us the location. I saw him come around the corner. I got him. Okay. The I got him. Right I got around. him. We're coming around. We're coming left. Hang on. We immediately did a pull up, a 180 degree turn, came in behind the chase vehicle. We're over the top now. It's got him. Okay, now. 12, he's westbound on 50th from sector from uh, Lowell. Okay, he's westbound on 50th from Lowell. That's affirmative. He's approaching tennis. Okay. 120, I'll try to block traffic here at 50th. Okay, 120. 814, I'm going to catch you at 48. Okay, southbound on Tennyson from 50th. Okay, southbound on Tennyson from 50th. 115 and 16, you're behind the chase, or behind the car. Victor 10, we're coming uh, 50th, 49th and Tennyson. Okay, Victor 10. The suspect vehicle was going around cars forcing vehicles off the road, going through stop signs at a high rate of speed. 115. This was a very determined individual they were chasing. Still southbound. Okay, 112 cross 46 southbound on Tennyson. The chase continued winding through residential streets at 55, 60 miles an hour. This becomes very, very hazardous then. Had it been a situation other than a uh, armed robbery suspect, we would have discontinued that chase long before it got to those speeds. The news helicopter continued to track the truck from above. Okay, too many cars. 115, you're calling? Steve's northbound on Yates. Northbound on Yates from 44th. Everybody was in the chase. Policemen were coming head on at him, and he would actually play chicken with them. He just barely missed that cop car. He's going after him. He's going after those police later. cars. The nutcase here. Nutcase. I'm thinking this person's a maniac, and he's creating a very dangerous situation. He's about 46th Avenue from Yates. At this point, we probably had 15 or 20 cars involved blocking traffic, advising us of the location. Now. It was really getting more and more dangerous as time went on. Okay. As he was speeding down the street, I, I saw a white car stopped in the street. A man jumped out of the car. Jim and I then witnessed the suspect vehicle hit that individual and sent his uh, body cartwheeling through the air. There was no question that he, he had died on impact. The suspect continued up the hill. There were no brake lights. There was no slowing of the vehicle. There was no concern for that human life that uh, is now laying in the street there. I kicked the helicopter around so I could look back the death of that individual had formed a natural barrier which stopped the chase. There was nobody in pursuit. Okay, give me a car near right away where. When we continue. We observed the suspect going into this parking lot. 
I said to Jim, you know what's going to happen next? He's going to take a hostage. I like the Sprite in you. Hey, yo, kid, where's the party? Check it out, I'm Kid, and I kid you not, I like the Sprite. I like the Sprite a lot. My name is Sprite, but I'm not playing, I like the Sprite. You know what I'm saying? I like to kick it live to a soundless hype. I like to kick it too. I like the Sprite in you. I like the lime and taste. I like a pretty face. I like the lemon lime. You say that all the time. The lime has the twist of unexpectedness. Like this. Who invited them? I don't know, but I'm with I it. I like the Sprite in you. Good. You got a TV. Oh, and I see you've got a phone, too. Well, if you pick it up now and call Domino's Pizza, we'll deliver a medium with all the toppings you want for just $8.99 and another for only $4 more. Plus, you get a Domino's Pizza, it's hot, it's fresh, sweepstakes card right on the box. Watch CBS TV, and if your card has the lucky phrase, you could win a Dodge Caravan SE or Plymouth Forger SE instantly. And everybody gets free long distance from MCI. The folks who bring your friends and family. That's it. Now quickly, grab that phone and call Domino's. During a high-speed chase in Denver, an armed robbery suspect had managed to elude police when he struck and killed a man standing in the street. I hollered at my partner. I said, stop, stop. We've got to help this guy. I ran over to where the, the party was. He was dead. I remember shaking my head thinking, this poor guy didn't have a chance. You know, he didn't have a chance. And one of the other detectives saw his identification laying on the, on the ground. The man was Detective Bob Wallace. I've known him for 17 years and had no idea that was him laying there. That's how badly he was injured. It was terrible. Yes, sir. 48th and Tennyson Ambulance responding. Code 10. Okay, we got an officer down here. News pilot Mike Silva and photographer Jim Stair were now the only ones tracking the suspect. He uh, came to a T intersection. At the speed he was going, there was no way he was going to make the turn. Stayed with him the best we could. Okay. Two start the investigators for this accident. Two twenty-six. He's out of the car. I realized that police officers didn't know what was going on now on the ground. Silva and Stair wanted to tell the police where the suspect was, but they were only set up to talk to their own newsroom. One twelve. One twelve. I can hear him talk about the helicopter, but I couldn't talk to the police officers. I knew that everybody could see me up there. And hopefully, they're going to use me as a beacon to track this suspect. Yes, Adam 86, would you cover 48th and Tennyson? 216, 226, are you on foot at 51st and Tennyson? Yes, sir. Okay, car to cover 226, on foot at 51st and Tennyson. We observed the suspect going into this parking lot of this apartment complex. I said to Jim, you know what's going to happen next? He's going to take a hostage. Okay, Victor 10. I just felt kind of helpless there traveling in this helicopter 500 feet above the ground. Down below, 21-year-old Mary Ann Barbary and her baby boy were about to leave the parking lot, unaware of the armed suspect approaching her car. I saw him raise the pistol. Though the bullet hit the car, it missed both Mary Ann and her baby. I'm thinking this person is intent on getting away at any cost. It doesn't matter who he has to hurt or kill. Turn into more than we want. Location, field area. Shell four helicopters uh, overhead. Our 
Somebody has fired at a uh, civilian vehicle here. Okay. He keeps looking up at us. I can see that he's upset. We're still with him. Two people were standing out beside an old pickup. We had the gun out. All we could do was watch. advised the assignment desk what's going on. I was afraid for that hostage's life. Okay, I'll... 120, we need cars on uh, Sheridan by the trailer park. He ran down the hill towards the trailer park. Officer Roger Prince was in one of the cars searching the trailer park. I could see a helicopter circling and bouncing all around in the sky. So using that as a key, I just pulled up in the mobile home shopping center area and was waiting and watching. Units from all over were converging on the area, including Officer Jim Weissman. My thought at that particular point was, okay, he's got to be on foot somewhere in this trailer park. There was a guy. Let me kick it around. Okay. We watched the green pickup truck leaving the mobile home park. We saw police cars coming from the other direction, and we thought, well, this is pretty much it. It's, you know, it's going to end right here. I'm going to set you up here. we got plenty of air. I immediately bring the helicopter to a hover to take pictures of the arrest. Come down to 53rd place on uh, Tennyson and go east at the trailer park. We saw just an old guy driving it. Didn't really think that much about it at all. They drove past him, and it acted like nothing was going on. At that point, I started pointing out the window towards the truck, hoping the guys were looking. We thought he was going to get away. I said to myself, we're going to try to put an end to this situation right here, right in this parking lot, right now. Come on down. Keith and I just looked at each other and thought, that's the truck that just drove by us. Right here by the trailer. Okay, at 53rd and Tennyson. I could see that the suspect was forcing the victim to drive out of the parking lot. I knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to take it, that next exit, and he was going to be into another mess again. in front of the truck and sat there. The suspect then aimed his pistol at us. I knew at that time I had to do something. A cop car rammed the side of the truck and probably saved our lives. Cops were screaming at him to give it up, give it up. As soon as the skid touched the ground, I just popped my door open and kept moving in as close as I could. About that time, it looked like he turned the pistol from the hostage towards one of the cops, and they started shooting. come to a point where it was either kill or be killed. It was that simple. The 23-year-old suspect died at the scene of multiple gunshot wounds. He was subsequently found to have recently escaped from prison in Texas. His 
hostage, John Lorienti, was unharmed. Though Officer Prince had been injured by a flying bullet shrapnel, no one else at the scene had been hurt. Thank God that Silva's had enough intestinal fortitude to put that helicopter in front of the truck and stop any further chase. Silva's may have stopped any further deaths. Uh, he put himself in grave danger, and I thank the man for it. There was no elation whatsoever. There was no feeling that I made the touchdown, it's over, we won. He started thinking about everything that just happened in the last 22 minutes. And it left you empty. There were too many uh, tragedies that negated any feelings whatsoever of elation, gratification, satisfaction. Five days later, the city of Denver paid their last respects to Detective Bob Wallace, a 22-year veteran struck down by the suspect as he tried to get away. The day before this incident took place, Bob had uh, come up and he wanted to tell everyone about his new granddaughter. He was, he was so happy, so extremely happy. I'll never forget that. It just, God, it hurts. I'll miss my father seeing my daughter grow up. I miss his sense of humor and just him being there when things get tough for me. But my dad was doing what he loved to do. And he was right in the middle of it in the chase. He wasn't sitting back with his feet up on a desk. He was out there chasing bad guys. You know, that's uh, some consolation. You've done such a wonderful job. Of Several weeks later, 73-year-old hostage John Laurenti finally got a chance to thank news photographer Jim Stair and pilot Mike Silva. Here's, John, here's somebody you want to meet. Mike Silva. Oh, God bless you. You're a hell of a man, you know that? Yeah. I'm so proud of you. You're the, you're the, you're the best be helicopter guy I ever saw. When I met John for the first time, it was great. Uh, he thought I was the greatest thing since sliced bread called me the helicopter boy, and uh, it was very gratifying. There was something positive that was, that was taken out of this thing, and that was a friendship between John and I. Mike Silber saved my life, and I try to do my part by saving his life. When the truck was blocked off, that's when Hutchison says, you better ram that helicopter. He said, because if you don't, we're both going to be dead. And I told him, no. I said, I won't ram him. I'm not going to kill the pilot. I said, no way. Nothing boy, when that car rammed, he got up close and he got me. Bow. That was it. I said, oh, thank God. That helicopter boy. I don't have to hit him. I got away from him. In appreciation of John's courage, the TV station and a local car dealership presented him with a brand new pickup truck. He handed me the truck keys and said, here, John, go on fishing. And I said, well, you're kidding. Well, I couldn't believe it. I said, I'm just a lucky man. Bye-bye, Johnny. Next. This one was especially rough for me. It's really frustrating not being able to reach through the telephone and, and do something. Okay. Are breathing now? No, I don't think so. A report on women's health. January 1991, Gynalotrimin freed women of needing a prescription to cure recurrent vaginal yeast infections. In the time I took to get a prescription, with Gynalotrimin, my cure has begun. Gynecologists have prescribed Gynalotrimin to cure millions of women. It's available full prescription strength for early treatment, early cure, and that's healthier. Gynalotrimin is important news for women's health. Gynalotrimin, it brings you early treatment, early cure.
You may have noticed lately that lots of people are having considerable trouble walking and chewing gum at the same time. Perhaps it's because of the great taste of Trident. Original fruit and bubble. Trident, good for your teeth. And great taste, too. But I told him. Well, look, maybe the guy wasn't listening. Oh, no, no. here it comes. <laughs> When allergies come on this strong, Benadryl comes on stronger. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. That wonder from Down Under is back in action. Scary, eh? Paul Hogan stars in Crocodile Dundee 2. Next. A cop is pushed over the edge. I became crazed. When a baby becomes a human shield. Put the kid down now. My baby! On Top Cops, Thursday. Here's tonight's winning phrase for the Domino's Pizza. It's Hot It's Fresh Sweepstakes. If your phrase matches, you've won your choice of a Plymouth Voyager SE or Dodge Caravan SE. If it didn't, you can play again. Just call Domino's, order a pizza, and get another game card, plus free long distance from MCI. So collect your game cards and watch the CBS special Haunted Lives tomorrow to see if you're a winner. Alcohol can turn an excellent driver into a dangerous driver. With limited judgment, poor coordination, and slow reaction time, play it safe. Choose a designated driver. On Saturday afternoon, July 28, 1990, Gary and Julie Mayo returned to their home in Keller, Texas, after visiting a local nursery. It was a nice day, sunny day. So we uh, went off and bought some plants. We intended spending the afternoon uh, planting these plants. While Gary and Julie worked in the garden with their nephew, their three daughters, Nikki, Aaron, and Kelly, played nearby. No, I don't think so. You. None of you have a When we originally bought the house, there was no gate, actually, uh, from the back door of the house to the pool. That was the first thing I did, was actually build a fence with the gate on it. Normally I kept the gate locked, and uh, the only time it was ever open was when I was next to the pool. Unfortunately, on there, I was next to the pool. I remember Nikki going in. Uh, I don't really remember Aaron going in, but I wasn't paying much attention. My nephew was here. He's visiting from England and he was using the edger. It makes real big noise. and I stood there for about oh, 20 seconds maybe trying to unscrew the, the holes from the sprinkler and I couldn't do it and then I just had to turn to the pool and I, that's when I saw her Communications supervisor Brent Robbins took the call. Keller 911 emergency. Yeah, I'm 
we need an ambulance. My daughter's been in the pool. I think she's drowned. What happened to her? Her baby went in the pool. Okay, how old is she? She's two and a half. Okay, did she get her out of the pool now? Oh, um, yeah, she has, but she looks unconscious, my husband. Okay, can you tell she's breathing? Uh, I think she was going to go This one was especially rough for me. My wife was six months pregnant at the time of that call. So, you know, I started, I put myself in, in Julie's place. Okay, all right, ma'am, you got to calm down. Go, go. Officer John Lee was in the station when the call came in, and he ran out the door and was, was on the way. Medic 1, Engine 2, 311, respond to medical emergency. Rescue units with the Keller Fire Department were also sent to the scene. Get her right next to the phone with me, okay? Bring her right to the phone. Take yourself a deep breath, and I'm going to tell you how to help out this child, okay? Okay. okay. Your husband to tilt her head back and cover, cover up the baby's mouth and nose with his mouth. Cover the mouth and the nose with your mouth. Tell him to get two little soft puffs of air, blow it into the baby. And the nose around your mouth. Two soft puffs of air. And watch for your baby's chest to rise up, okay? And watch for her chest to rise up. And don't tilt his head back too far. Do she's that two times. Around. She's, she's coming around. Breathing now? No, I don't think so. Each time I heard no, she's not breathing, or I asked, is she breathing, and the answer was no. It's it's really frustrating not being able to reach through the telephone and, and do something. Okay. All right. Do it again. Tell your husband to tilt his head back again, cover mouth and nose with his mouth, and blow two more soft puffs of air in. Two soft puffs of air, Gary. Two soft puffs of air, and then keep the head... Okay, just keep telling him to do that. Tilt the head back, Tilt cover the, the back, mouth Gary. and the nose, and give her two soft puffs of air. Two soft puffs of air. I don't need to. Oh, God, I don't need to breathe. They're going to be there in just a second, ma'am. Oh. Just calm down. God, where are you? Please. Please. Keller police officer John Lee was the first to arrive. Just bring him to the baby, okay? They're here. They're here. They're here. Okay. All right, ma'am. Take care of yourself. Can you hear me? Hello? I felt a little bit of hope. I felt, and thank God I've got somebody here who knows what they're doing. Go get me a towel or something. Moments later, paramedic David Jones and EMT Charlie Mitchell got to the scene. When we got there, she did have a pulse, but... She wasn't controlling her respirations. She wasn't getting any oxygen in. She was really cyanotic. Her color was pale blue. O2. O2's going. Y'all can get an IV started on her. Can I get an alcohol prep? Yeah. Kelly? Can you hear me, Kelly? My greatest concern was the possibility of brain damage. Because with the Kelly, drowning, you don't know exactly how long they've been without oxygen. Her level of consciousness was still real low, so I called for care flight. Okay. Fourteen minutes after Kelly was pulled from the water, the medical chopper arrived to transport her to the hospital. Well, I didn't realize she was going in a helicopter at first. They just put her on the stretcher, and I just went out there, and I was running behind them, and then they said, you can't go on, so there's not room for you. Kelly's parents could only watch as the chopper took their youngest daughter away. When we continue, I try and reassure them that everything is being done. Okay. Um, that she's very sick and it is possible that she's not going to survive. Dodge Shadow America and Plymouth Sundance America not only have a more powerful engine and more room than the Honda Civic, they're the lowest priced cars in the world with an airbag. And now, there's a low monthly price for first-time buyers and additional factory-to-dealer incentives that could save you even more. At about $4.50 a day, that's less than you spend on lunch. Maybe it's time you rediscovered American values you can really sink your teeth into. Wake up, Benadryl users. Your allergy ingredient is used in sleeping aids, not Chlortrimeton. Ours is just as effective but less sedating. Wake up, Benadryl users. Try Chlortrimeton, the allergy relief you want, less of the drowsiness you don't. They're right. New diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. 
So let's have another. New Diet Dr. Pepper. There's no stopping the taste. Rescue 911 will continue. UFOs is seeing, believing. The substance could not be identified as anything known on Earth. Meet real people who have been abducted. When I felt the numbing shock, I blacked out. Six men witness a friend disappear. A policeman whose experience will shock you. Do they really exist? See for yourself. Visitors from the Unknown, Friday at 8. Buckle up, Beverly Hills. Hey! Eddie Murphy is back to take care of business. How long would it take to shave those legs anyway? Beverly Hills Cop 2 at a special time, Saturday. First rule of being a grandpa, be tough. That's not fair. Second rule, don't miss the return of the family man. Give them whatever they want. Coming in June. This is CBS. Pizza Hut Delivery presents the return of the $4 pizza deal. So we know the deal. Our first pizza is... Regular price. And after four more pizzas are each... Four bucks. What about a Super Supreme, a Meat Lovers, and a Pepperoni pizza? Regular price, four bucks, four bucks. Five Supreme. Regular price, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks. First pizza, regular price, then as many as four more, just four dollars each. Okay, how about two Supremes, an Italian sausage pizza, a date with you, and a Pepperoni pizza? Regular price, four bucks, four bucks, now for a zillion bucks, four oh, bucks. Oh. Pizza Hut, make it a Pizza Hut now delivers in selected areas. See your local Yellow Pages for location nearest you. Me and Joe were two of the most feared players in football. Now we want to try more peaceful pursuits, like fishing. We brought along some cold Miller Lights. This Light's not some watered-down version of a regular beer. It's a less filling beer that really tastes great. You ready to try and catch a fish, Randy? Okay, Joe, I'll go first. Hey, fish! Get in the boat! Oh, this fish is pretty easy. It's no fish story. When it's Miller Light, less filling tastes great. Hey, that was too small. Get out of here! A man trapped in a woman's body. Ellen Barkin stars in Switch at 11. When two-and-a-half-year-old Kelly Mayo was found floating face down in her family's swimming pool, her parents managed to get her breathing again using CPR instructions received over the phone. But as Kelly was airlifted to a nearby hospital, no one knew how severe her brain damage might be. The flight to Cook's Fort Worth Children's Medical Center took less than 10 minutes. Uh, is that a two-year-old uh, near drowning? Yeah, what have we got here? We've got a near drowning. Pediatric neurologist Warren Marks assessed Kelly's condition. She was posturing, that is, all of her extremities, her arms and her legs were sticking straight out. She had abnormal muscle tone. Uh, which is a sign that either your brain is swelling or that you have injury to the brain stem. Why don't we get Johnny down? She's going to need a brain. Hey, guess what okay, we got? there you go, Johnny. Pediatric intensivist Dr. Okay. Johnny Griggs was also called in. Any okay, Gary, let's get a tube that holds some traction for you here. The main objective when she came in was to protect her brain from further injury. We would continue to do all the breathing for Kelly, keeping her paralyzed with uh, medications, keeping her very heavily sedated with medications so that she would expend very minimal energy. We don't know about her neck. Make sure they get C-spine films and a chest x-ray as well. Two-and-a-half-year-old Kelly Mayo was in a medically-induced coma. We put her in the CAT scan, and there was no evidence of a blood clot, nothing that required the surgeon to go to the operating room with Kelly, but her brain did look swollen. I try and reassure them that everything is being done, um, that she's very sick, and it is possible that she's not going to survive. At that point, I, I lost it. I started shaking. In fact, the wife had to shout at me to... Uh, to bring me back to reality. So we were there for about, about two or three hours before we went up to intensive care to see her. She looks so small and ill. Okay, consistently 35? Uh-huh, about 35. Her blood pressure and vital signs initially had been stable, but they now had started to fluctuate as well. Dr. Griggs was trying to reduce the swelling and the pressure in her brain with drugs. The first 48 hours were marked by the spikes of an intracranial pressure. The monitor reads out a digital number. With each spike, to me, indicated that the brain was in more trouble. 
33 with a fusion mm -hmm. pressure mm -hmm. up as well. Okay. Okay. Give me some big Still breaths, 35. big slow breaths, okay? And so, from then on, that infamous number. I don't know if you've ever tried to control an inanimate object, but I was trying to control that number. Down, number down. And Dr. Griggs, he said they couldn't control the pressure any longer. And they thought she was going to have serious brain damage. I always see Kelly floating in the pool. Just face down. And I see that all the time. And I just think, God, how long was she in there? And how long did she struggle for? And what was she thinking? If she did try and call out, then we couldn't hear her. It should never have happened. <sighs> Kelly had been in the hospital for four days when Julie returned to her room to find everything had changed. Gary was sat there holding her. He was sat in a rocking chair holding her. So I kind of knew then that she was going to be okay. So then I, you know, I put the baby in Julie's arms. It was crap. My moment came when mom was able to hold Kelly. Uh, you've given a child back to a family. A lot of families are not this fortunate. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. You step back. You let them enjoy the moment. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to do. That's my moment in the sun. Kelly was released from the hospital after 10 days. She still has periodic checkups, but after three months, it's clear she has no brain damage. Hi. That's stupidity on my part that it happened in the first place. I should have watched it better. And the bottom line is, even if you're near them, you can't turn your back for 30 seconds. Because they can be in, and you don't see anybody around, and your baby could be dead. Drowning is one of the most common causes of accidental death in young children in this country. Kelly's whole family is grateful that she managed to survive. From the policeman, the dispatcher, to the medics, and the fire department, and the helicopter. People and all the doctors and the nurses, you know, it's fantastic the way it works. Everything just goes so quick. She fell in the pool and she couldn't breathe and I was scared. Thank you for saving my sister. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Next. I ran back to assist the officer. There was no movement from the inside of the car because they had been knocked unconscious. Good, you got a TV. Oh, and I see you've got a phone too. Well, if you pick it up now and call Domino's Pizza, we'll deliver a medium with all the toppings you want for just $8.99 and another for only $4 more. Plus, you get a Domino's Pizza, it's hot, it's fresh, sweepstakes card right on the box. Watch CBS TV, and if your card has the lucky phrase, you could win a Dodge Caravan SE or Plymouth Forger SE instantly. And everybody gets free long distance from MCI. The folks will bring your friends and family. That's it. Now quickly, grab that phone and call Domino's. pressure gets rid of the toughest odors. I use it here, here, even here. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Did I tell you what I discovered in my litter box? Oh, please. They got me control cat litter. Controls ammonia odor. Ammonia odor? How vile. Or so I hear. You should smell my litter now. Oh, I'm sure. It's lovely. Look, this special paper shows control helps prevent ammonia odor. Where is your litter? Phew. I beg your pardon. Trust me, hon. I have a nose for these things. <laughs> control cat litter. Because if you don't like ammonia odor... Imagine how we feel. 
The first time I switched pain relievers, it was from aspirin to Tylenol. Then recently, I switched again from Tylenol acetaminophen to Advil. You see, I got these really pounding headaches, and I found Tylenol didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I tried Advil and found that for my really tough headaches, two Advil worked better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets, better than extra strength Tylenol caplets, better than Tylenol gel caps. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Welcome to the Wild Everything's West. Everything's yeah. going yeah. my way. You can speak for yourself. Harry Smith in the Wild West on CBS This Morning. Some say they don't exist. Others swear they're out there. Now meet real people who've encountered real ghosts. I've got four or five witnesses who also saw it too. From the bizarre haunting of a toy store. I feel my hair being caressed. To the ghostly children who wouldn't leave their home. Become a believer. Haunted Lives Wednesday. Win cash with the flash at 7-Eleven up to $100,000. Game card and details at participating 7-Eleven stores. Catch the flash Saturday night to see if you're a winner. Sometimes what seems like a simple problem can unexpectedly erupt into a life and death emergency. As one highway patrol officer discovered on the afternoon of May 30th, 1990 in Santa Ana, California. Around 5 p.m., Officer Keith Thornhill was heading south on the 55 freeway. I'm driving along and uh, as soon as I came over a rise on the freeway, I saw a woman walking in the carpool lane. She was walking north in the south carpool lane. So it's pretty much standard procedure to, to run across people on the freeway all the time, just walking along, not necessarily even knowing where they are or, or caring. I was slowing the, the group of traffic and started to move from the right lane and then moved into the carpool lane. Yeah. Come to Sarah Divider, please, ma'am. Sarah Divider. And as I got closer and closer, I could tell uh, that she wasn't quite with it. I could see her face, and she didn't re even realize who Lady. I was or what was going on. Lady, come here, please. Ma'am. While Officer Thornhill tried to get the woman off the freeway safely, a small car waiting to change lanes was stuck behind the parked patrol car. At that point, a fire hose of gas came pouring out the side as the gas tank uh, broke. And the gas came flooding out uh, all over. I could just see it pouring out. I called in the crash and said there was a, a crash with a car on fire. On patrol nearby was Officer Dana Sampson, a trained EMT. I heard Keith come over the radio. He sounded really, really stressed, really excited. He was out of breath. I'm running back to the car, and I, I don't see anyone in it, and I think that they're down up under the dash. When Ron Slagle spotted the burning car, he pulled over to try and help. I ran back to assist the officer. There was no movement from the inside of the car because they had been knocked unconscious. I reached to the door handle, started to yank on the door, and it didn't even move. I immediately pulled out my baton. I hit it real hard. Sometimes it's hard to break them smashed out the window on it. I saw it hit these guys in the face. The panic was setting in with the victim at that point in the time, and Officer Thornhill took charge and pulled him out and got him to the ground. I was a scared kid, but I see my buddy there. He was still unconscious. You know, he was out, his seatbelt was across, and the car was on fire. An eyewitness in the building overlooking the freeway called 911. The Santa Ana Fire Department was immediately dispatched to the scene. And when I got up almost to the scene, I could tell that traffic on the southbound lanes was just stopped. I just knew, you know, it's going to take me 10 minutes to get there if I go up to the next exit and turn around. So that's when I was going as fast as I could, wishing it would go a little faster. 
At this point, I thought he was, the passenger was dead for sure because it was the flames were going too much. Uh, gave it just a quick tug to see if the door would come open. It wouldn't. And it was really, really hot. Seeing the gasoline pouring out under the car was a concern that the whole ground would go up. Then the headliner of the car came down, the material had lit on fire. And at that point, he had come too. I just got him just out the window and I saw that his head and one arm still burning. His foot was, it got tangled up in the steering wheel, so we were just pulling against stuck weight. And I reached in, just ripped his uh, leg through the steering wheel. The car was completely engulfed in flames at that point. When I got there, I had no idea what had happened. Saw this car up in flames, saw these people lying on the ground. So I just started doing what I'd been trained to do. You know, you just take care of these people and worry about what happened later. It was an immediate relief, just the, the feeling of someone else being there. In his rush to help the victims, Officer Thornhill had not realized that he had also been injured. When he got up again, said, hold that there, and then poured the saline solution over my hands. I looked down and saw my arm bleeding and uh, wondered why I didn't feel it. Then I felt my hands uh, start getting hotter and hotter. Backup units continue to arrive on the scene. The passenger from the car, I could tell he was in shock. He was talking about someplace he had to be in a little while, and, and the car's flames. I could feel the heat from the car. It was just roasted. Uh, he's kind of out of it. Okay. Uh, he's got a cut on his arm. All right. And this other guy over here's got some burns on his legs and his okay. arm. I think this guy's probably most serious. Okay. What happened? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Take over to the hospital, okay? Okay. Passenger Jason Tremble had suffered only minor burns on his arms and legs. Driver David Fire had suffered back and neck injuries. The woman who had been found wandering along the freeway was taken to the psychiatric unit of a local hospital. Officer Thornhill, in his rescuing these two gentlemen, had uh, uh, an injury sustained to his back as well as uh, a lacerated arm and some burns to his uh, face and hands. I was so impressed with Officer Thornhill. He was extremely brave and courageous in um, putting his own life at stake and possibly being burned severely. The strength that he possessed at that time to extract two men through a small window of a car out onto the street was just awesome. Three months later, Keith Thornhill continues in therapy for his sprained back, but will soon be returning to active duty as a highway patrol officer. You very rarely get to have the, the situation work out as positive as this. To have the situation work out where everyone's walking and talking and, and everyone's uh, eventually going to be fine, it's, a, it's just a nice change. Jason Tremble cannot forget Officer Thornhill or that day. This police officer, he saved our lives. I mean, we wouldn't be here if he wasn't there. I mean, I doubt anybody else would stop and go into a, a burning car to pull us out. <laughs> what a shot, huh? Jason's father is also grateful. Anybody that goes beyond their call of duty and goes into flames in a burning car is definitely considered a hero. There's not enough thanks you can give a person for something like that. There never will be enough thanks. You know, the man saved my son. No one is more thankful than David Fire's mother. Dave and I have gotten a lot closer since the accident. 
we do a lot more together. We talk more on the phone. I love my son very much, and if I lost him, I think it would have killed me. I'll always remember Mr. Thornhill. I'll always remember David and what occurred and what, what we've gone through. God gave me another chance for some reason, so I just gotta continue and live my life, and hopefully it'll be long and prosperous. Was it an accident? Yeah, don't you have any leads at all? It's in the walls! I'll get an answer as soon as I do. Arson? Check that door for heat! Or murder? You burned him, Stephen! It will come between brothers. You guys should just try picking up the phone once in a while. And separate lovers. I really miss you. This Saturday night at a special sneak preview from director Ron Howard. Backdraft. Rated R. Special sneak preview Saturday night. Did you know the cost of two business calls from these Detroit mechanics to Atlanta may surprise you? Vintage cars are my specialty. With AT&T Long Distance, your small business can get AT&T quality at extremely competitive prices. I treat cars like people. Even though the other company would like you to believe. See ya. They always save you lots of money. That's all I save? Drives you crazy, doesn't it? Competitive price. Another AT&T advantage. If every dog in the world were a puppy, all we'd make is puppy chow. But they're not. That's why Purina makes a complete line of nutritious dog foods. Pet tested, veterinarian recommended. How about red lobster shrimp for lunch? Just $3.99. For tempting fried shrimp and scampi with potato and salad, just $3.99. Including unlimited hot fresh bread at Red Lobster for lunch. If your community does not have 911, post the emergency numbers for your area by each phone and teach your children how to use them. This program is dedicated to the men and women in emergency medical services who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Do you believe in ghosts? Tomorrow night, a man tries to solve a century-old murder with the help of the victim. This story and more real-life experiences on haunted lives, true ghost stories, tomorrow on CBS.